guys and welcome back to another bio pass where we're going to talk about all things watches as the first one had so much success so many questions so many people getting involved in the debate we thought we're going to do another segment touch upon a few watches that we missed in the first part and also answer some of the questions that you guys have asked us with Liam and Bobby Hi. Uh, we've also got a special guest today who is Chris Chris is a keen YouTube watcher of ours and has asked to come in to do some work experience so towards the end of this video Chris is going to come in and ask some questions of himself so Let's jump into it, no time at the present. Let's discuss with the current market. How's it been over the last week? Let's jump into that straight away. Quiet, the last couple of weeks couple have been quieter. Weeks, yeah, the last couple of weeks have been quieter, but this week's been really good. We've been off, yeah, really good. Yeah. We sold the 57, 12 rows. We sold a couple of big pieces, which is good. It's weird because the big stuff's still moving, the little stuff's still moving, but anything in the middle has kind of slowed down, yeah. Where do you think it is compared to this time last year? Because we looked a couple of months ago, didn't we? And so this time last year was a a bit of a crash and burn phase wasn't it we were going down and going down fast mm -hmm. the market was plummeting we just had the discontinuations i think people were banking a lot of things to get this continued which didn't which took a lot of confidence away from the marketplace so i think we're i think we're better than where we were last year that's for sure they're much more stable it's stabilized sure. yeah, yeah definitely yeah. It's, it is pretty stable right now seems to be a more because i remember doing the instagram last year this time last year and price fluctuation would just be crazy from like one week to another it does seem to be a bit more yes yeah, so we have to be this time last year we, we had to be really keen on prices because we're changing in some instances like every couple of days you'd have to revise your prices mm -hmm. it's a little bit still a little bit better as a buyer right now it's still a bit of a yeah. buyer's market i think the price is not they're not dropping but there's deals to be had and people are, are part exchanging a lot of watches yeah. and that means part exchanges are typically good deals because if you don't want them you just kind of get out of them pretty quickly with like 250 on top so yeah a lot of the watches not always but a lot of them are just kind of flying out right now because the prices are pretty keen yeah a lot of models are getting quite close to the list price as well which means you, you, you really are beating the wait list question off the back of that then yeah a lot of people do seem to be part action at the minute yeah. now i'm not saying this is for everyone but do you think that's a case of people bought the watches at high prices during the, the crazy period and now they're just trying to get out of them and rather than having that extra bit of income that a lot of people have from crypto or whatever it might have been during that time they're now just looking to get out of the watches that they've maybe taking a bit of a hit on people it's the most cost it. effective way to change yeah, your watch yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah and also you get a bit bored and you want to change your watch it's been a year or two and obviously in the first video there's a few things we, we didn't touch upon because we did always plan on doing number two but let's get into the bio pass rolex daytonas let's talk what yeah. rolex daytonas you would potentially buy and which ones you'd, you'd definitely look to stay away from at the minute if any i think if any AD offers you a, a, a daytona right now you take it any, yeah. any daytona yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a pretty easy question daytona because i mean obviously bi metals are going to be your least desirable and your least profitable but then we've sold a few of them recently absolutely i mean yeah three or four years ago bi metals didn't sell but now they sell all the time so yeah any bi metal any steel any white gold platinum all Daytonas sell and they're all pretty profitable yeah if you get that quality yeah. day, you've got Daytona you should have a smile on your face yeah definitely I yeah. think so some more than others obviously like Platinum's obviously going to earn you the most uh, the Meteorites will earn you the most but they're now discontinued so you won't be getting one of them unless you want to buy one from us because we have one in stock right here we also got the Rose in stock and we also have access to the white gold full white gold Meteorite as well if anyone wants that <laughs> but any Daytona any Daytona is a good buy at the minute yeah. okay so that gets the thumbs up well this was a question I had for later on but you, you've just touched on it then and and it's something me and Johnny were briefly talking about. So the meteorite dials in watches, Daytonas, whatever it might be, in my opinion, they aren't seen as high as they should be because that is a piece of meteorite. It's something that's not going to be around forever. I've heard you say this before. Mm -hmm. Why are they not seen as the top, 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 top dial? The elite watch. Yes, yeah, why? Like, they are the it. elite watch, definitely. I think... I don't know, I'd be surprised. I mean, Chris saw one before for his first time and he, he, he had a, a smile on his face. Yeah. They're definitely, they are an elite watch. They are something special. But maybe it's just like anything, they get the notoriety once they're discontinued or maybe once people realise... Rolex have, again, again, Chris is a good example. He never gets the chance to walk into a Rolex store and mm. see these types of watches. Mm. Most people don't ever get to see them until you come into a boutique like ours, and then they do wow you. So maybe that's the fact that maybe that's it. They're not being seen enough to be to be wow. I but think they're definitely seen as the pinnacle of their model yeah, range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like a Meteorite Daytona is probably the I'm not talking rainbows and stuff. They're mesmerised. Yeah, honestly, they are. And, it, and no, no Meteorite the dials ever the same. Yeah. So you know, we've pictured them before, and they they look unbelievable. I mean, they're great to picture, and they're a great watch. But why should they be 150? Grand, I don't think they, they should be there. I think that where they are now is a price point where yeah. people would would and could buy them. All right, they're going to be more expensive than 
a normal Daytona, but you're buying a meteorite dial, you're buying something that has rarity. I'm not even going to ask you guys, but for me, that is a buy, 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 because one day they're going to run out of Older. the dials well, and then they're the, going to discontinue uh, the certain the, models in the range they say they have shoot. they say they have already that's one of the reasons why i think they discontinued them i think there's only so much that they've got and if they want to make it last over the like the next 10 15 20 years okay submariners what what subs would you be saying buy what subs would you say stay away from if any again yeah steel blocks no date date again great watches to get i'd always take one of them no no issues at all mm. starbucks is steel black is the buy metal's just about profitable. I think it's yeah. about blue more so than the black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the black. Actually, the black won't be profitable. The mm -hmm. buy metal black. No, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I think you're fine. I think you're safe with subs. Mm -hmm. Again, it's getting harder to get out the ideas as well. Sea dwellers. Stay away from the black. Uh, the buy metal. Stay away from the buy metal black. Stay away from the plain black. But the red writing, which is the C dollar forty three and yes. the James Cameron, they'll make you profit. Yeah, always yeah. very popular, them, aren't they? Definitely. Yeah, and then you've got yeah. the the Challenger. The, the Challenger will make you profit as well. We yeah. just paid what thirty two grand or something stupid for that. Yeah, and I think that as mm. it's a to look at. It's a bit grotesque. It's a bit big, and you can you can wear on a daily basis. But to, it's a, definitely a sleeper watch, isn't it? I think in, it's a collector's piece. Yeah, 10, mm -hmm. 15 years time, you'll start seeing them come out and fetching quite I'll a premium. See me re rock it in ten years time yeah. on my on my tiny wrists. Yeah. See you coming before I see you coming. <laughs> yeah. <for that>. Hang <laughs> on. Yeah. Obviously, they've discontinued the mill gauss now. But in terms of a, a grey market perspective, goodbye at the minute. Do you reckon it's going to shoot up a little bit more? Or the mill gauss has been around for a long time, and it it's always been. I mean, I remember buying them when they were like two grand, three grand. So. Mm -hmm. Then now, even if they're eight, nine, ten grand up, that represents a massive increase over 10, 15 years. So, no question, they're a good buy. And they, they weirdly have got more popular since they were discontinued. Yeah. We've sold quite a lot of them in the last month or so, barely any of them. So, I was thinking it's something that a proper collector that's got mm. would have that in now. It's been discontinued, even if they've stayed away from it for years. I think if you get that in now, it's yeah, if you can buy it at the collection. right price now, I yeah, I think it's a good, a good buy. Yeah. Got to have it in there. Yeah. I mean. Okay, Rolex Explorer. <laughs> I preferred the one before, uh, the discontinued one, the 39mm. I like them, but not my go-to watch. Mm -hmm. Is it profitable? No. I don't think so. Pennies, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, pennies. Marginal. Yeah, yeah marginal. Uh, the bimetal isn't. Again, would you take it just to get you on the list, to get you up the ladder? Oh, yeah, okay, so as a stepping stone watch, probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I probably yeah. would, yeah. Is that what you'd class it as, then, a stepping stone I would, watch? yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Explorer 2 is about, I think we would pay about nine and a half to ten for a white dial. For a black dial, we'd want to pay more like eight and a half to nine. Yeah. So the black dial, you're probably going to lose a grand. But again, slightly more than a stepping stone watch, but probably a good watch to buy if you're offered one or the opportunity. But try and get the Polar White because that's the one that people... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the one that sells more, isn't it? I think the price point on that's a bit high. I think Rolex are a bit high with it, to be honest. I think if they, they, they reduced it significantly, I think they'd sell more. Okay, so th things like the, the new release 1908, would you be saying that's a good buy for the future, for now, in general, bad buy, what do you well, think? Uh, it's hard to say on that one. <laughs> I, don't I just do not know where that's going to no, sit in the market. I'd have place. to say probably no. a good buy because it's a, a commemorative, it's an yeah. anniversary piece. I, I can't see it being around for long, and even if it is, they won't make that many of them anyway. And always when these things, the new pieces, when they come out, they're always highly inflated. So, you know, there's always. So, yeah, it's the type of watch. When people say like, they want to buy a birth year watch, mm -hmm. that's the type of watch I always look at when, when people ask me, like, it's just a nice watch to have. Who was born mm -hmm. in 1908? No, no, no. But if the new ones, people having kids now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I've got you a 1908 from the 2023. I think that'd be yeah. Up, I think it's, really, yeah. it's a nice touch there yeah. if you can get one. Yeah. Okay, so one for the ladies because obviously we don't really touch upon like ladies' watches and stuff. So look at me. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> right at me, one for the ladies because obviously we don't really. Touch. I'm engaging with the audience, Jonathan. So best, right? I've got a bit of a double double question with this. Something I think people would want to know. Best watches for ladies to buy out of Rolex at the minute, in your opinion. If firstly you if you can get them so what watches would you say is good and then the second part of that question is if i was looking to buy it for my missus my daughter etc etc what watches do you think long-term investment wise would be good for ladies to pick up so, well my first thing that comes into my mind so i'm a fan of the mother of pearl diamond dot so for me it would probably be something like that but then at the same time some ladies like the bigger watch of the 41 mil so straight away i've got my eye on 41 mil Sundust Diamond by Metal Rose, uh, and there is another one, and then plain with that Sundust plain without diamonds. Mm. So something like that. That's that's the way I see it. And they do it in 36 mil as well, and you can if you want more diamonds, you can get the factory bezel. Yeah, I think I'd go. Patriots 36, Rose and Steel Fluted Jubilee Wimbledon. 
that would be your choice. Nice. For yeah. both options yeah. as well, I think. Yeah. That's a good yeah. one, the whole value and stuff, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's sort of touched upon a lot of things. And we had certain people who commented and asked really good questions, so we wanted to answer their questions and, you know, have a bit of like interactive feedback with yep. them. So uh, firstly, this is from a guy called Madhouse. How much do you think the fluted date just 41 mint green goes for with the fluted bezel on a Jubilee? I've just got one from the AD and was looking to trade it up for a sports model. Will we sell that watch for what, 13k? Yeah, 13, 13, yeah. The 13, yeah, yeah 13 we sell, we'll sell for 12 and a half. So yeah, yeah, that's what, and then we pay around 750, 500 to 750 less, so. So we get this a lot. Uh, advice from someone who wears an Apple Watch. Now we get this on TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, in person, all the time. Why do we wear Apple Watches? So we wear Apple Watches for a number of reasons. So firstly, I never thought I'd ever wear an Apple Watch ever in my life. Since I started training and at the beginning of this year, I started training pretty heavily. Apple Watch for me is just the bollocks because I can see my steps, see my health. Everything about it is brilliant. Secondly, we don't take watches home with us. We don't take watches out of the store with us. Uh, and it's important that people know that, you know, from a security aspect that we don't wear watches on a general basis. I don't even wear my own watches anymore. And then the other reason obviously is that we get notifications to off to our watches. And also I can walk to Turkey Kieran whenever I need them. You see, it's great, it's great fun. <laughs> and so Rolex yeah. start counting steps. Yeah, yeah. And start letting me walk to Turkey Kieran and then forget it, yeah. <laughs> I do think we'd all probably own a Rolex smartwatch if they brought one out to be fair but they're easy to wear as well the amount yeah. of stuff that we do is like you get banged they get knocked yeah. they're just easy to wear they're light so that answers that people stop asking us and if you want to buy an Apple Watch we have <laughs> more than different sizes yeah, bracelets yeah. anything you need just, just, just get involved Shaft Kali 94 what about the green OP41 is it a good investment no no, no. discontinued and not and, and not gone up at all. Yeah. Was never popular anyway. I mean, more popular since it was discontinued, but was never popular anyway before it. It sits, I mean, you can't buy them now, but it sits at like six and a half, seven, seven and a half trade to retail. I just think there's better watches for the money. Yeah. It, to be honest with you, this new bubble one's starting to come through now. I know a couple of people have yeah, got so I, one. Yeah, I think yeah. that's going to do really well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I've got an inkling it's going to do really well in the Asian markets, if you know what I mean. Chris, do you want to come in and ask some questions or stand behind? So this is Chris, <laughs> who may not have seen him. We've GMG'd him up in these well, that's great. Oh, team already. So Chris, from what you've heard, or not, not just from what you've heard here today, but what questions have you always wanted to ask someone in the industry? What, what do you think? So let's say you've got someone that's just started getting into watches. Yeah. They've got about 10 grand to play around with. What are you going to recommend them? 10 grand, it's a bit of a weird price point, that's Yeah, I mean, the obvious one, I think, is just the date, just to try and get the right date, try and get, like, a nice, date just 41, I, I try and get a blue dial, and, like, try and pick up a nice smooth, even at retail, which I think 66 or 6900 for right. the Jubilee, try and flip it for seven and a half, just keep trying to build your pot, 500 quid each time. What about, what about an Air King for that? Budget? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, they, they do sell. Um, I mean, like, you can get the older model Air King probably for around five, five and a half. Again, you're just trying to make 500 quid. Yeah. You're, trying, you're just trying to buy watches under, I mean, look, no matter that, what size pot you've got, if you've got 20K, 30K, that means you can buy five or six Air Kings. You're just trying to find, trying to establish yourself, find a watch that's within your budget that you can make 500 quid on and just keep flipping. That's, that's, yeah. that's the best yeah. way. Before this went in, say, there was kind of a bit of speculation about what will be the next green thing. Dye. Green dial. Green dial. And then there was, the, there was the white gold blue dial. Yeah. What do you think the next iteration of the John Mayer, the next big? Well, the green dial Daytona blew up because of John Mayer. That's how it got its so name. It on. So it's all, isn't it? it's all about, it, it, the answer to the question is whatever celebrity blows up the next watch. And, and at the moment, I don't know if there's been anything recently has though, so. I think the new sky dweller with the teal dial is going yeah. to do really well. I think that's going to like. Yeah. Well, with someone like Drake or yeah, someone yeah, just, yeah. just gets it even first. Without, or, even without someone like Drake, yeah. I think it's just going to be one of those watches. Okay, right. So what's the most challenging part about your job? Logistics. Yeah. <laughs> Logistics is our problem. It's always everyone's problem. So buying uh, the actual purchase and sale of a watch is relatively easy, but logistically watches uh, are difficult to move around the country, move around the world, and to have in the right place at the right time is is not rare. It does happen, but it 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 takes it takes organisational skills to do that. So logistics is the biggest problem. One watch that you would buy out of Rolex now 
as an investment piece. Just one. If what if they offered me everything? Yeah, you, you can just take one watch out of the AD now. What are you taking? I'd take the new off catalog Ruby day too. Huh? <laughs> And I'll fucking yeah. the biggest and best one. <laughs> Jesus. Done. See you later. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you, can't, you can't follow that. Oh, I can't. No, that's, that's done. I mean, Did well, you want it from the past set releases then? Okay, yeah. From the past set releases, the one that we like the most, Ladies Blue, yeah. That's going to get worn by more that, men I think every, everyone wants that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's a stunner for me. Chris? Well, Close out with I'm you, mate. Like, Joe Grail, watch Chris. I'll, well, if you've done Patek, I'll do AP then. If okay. not, I? So, uh, oh, he's showing his knowledge here, is. isn't he? I'd go with the Salmon Dial Professional Calendar. Nice. Me. Yeah, nice. Or one of the, they're not brand new, but newish, the, the Hammer Dial Turbulence with a frosted bezel. Ooh. And that would be your okay. investment nice. piece investment. for the people, yeah? Grail, 6265, maybe. Nice. It's got good taste, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a 6263, and I've not, I've seen it once, but it's in, it's locked away in a safe that yeah. I haven't accessed for about five years. It's a slightly rare piece because it's, it's, it's missing oyster from the dial. So yeah, it's a little bit special. And you know, you asked me before about vintage pieces. I yeah. do like them. I just trade in them is a little bit different. You know, it's, it's difficult to. You've got to really, 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 really know your stuff when it comes down yeah. to that type of stuff. So That's it. Thanks, everyone, for watching this video. If you have got any questions and you'd like us to answer them in a potential part three, <laughs> let us know. We, we do appreciate all the comments and we've liked answering them. So get your comments in. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.